What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to convert strings to integers in Golang. All right guys, like I said in this video, we're going to convert strings to integers. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships, it's all my courses, videos, and books one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at converting strings to integers. And in most programming languages, like your Pythons and your Rubies, this is really, really easy. Not so easy in Go. It's a little bit complicated and a little bit tricky. It's really easy once you understand it, but it's not as intuitive as you might think. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Go videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file, I'm just calling it convert.go. It's our basic Go starter code that we've always got. And let's just create a variable. So let's go var, let's just call it my num, and that's gonna be a string, and we wanna set it equal to 41. Now notice this number has quotation marks around it, so it is a string. If we try to fmt.println and take my num, and then like add another number to it, this is gonna throw an error. Let's go ahead and save this, head back over to our terminal. I mean, my C go stuff directory, and let's run go run convert.go. And when we do, like I said, we get an error right away, mismatch type strings and untyped integer. So you can't add a string and a number. That's like having apples and adding four to it. What's apples plus four? Ah, you don't know. There's no way to do that, right? So we have to convert our my num into an integer. Now, like I said, this is a little bit tricky. What we need, is to import a package up here called strconv, so string convert basically, right? And this will allow us to convert strings into integers. So we can come down here and let's convert string to integer. So we need to actually just create an entire new variable to hold our new number, right? So I'm gonna call this my int. And we also need to create a variable called error. You can call this anything you want. You could call it e, you could call it bob, but this is gonna be an error and you'll see why in just a second. We'll also create that. And we're just, I'm just gonna use shorthand here and let's go strconv dot a to i, right? A to i, it's kind of weird. A stands for like a letter, the letter A, right? Strings are generally letters. We're, so we're converting letters to integers, a to i. I guess that's why they named it that. It seems weird to me, a toy, but whatever. So what do we wanna convert? We wanna convert our mind num variable, right? So here, now we've got this new variable. If we try and print this out, we're gonna get an error because we've created this error variable and we're not using it. So if we save this and run it, it's gonna tell us exactly that. It's gonna say, hey, you've declared this error variable, but you didn't use it. So what exactly is that error variable? Well, let's take a look. Let's head back over here and let's just print it out, right? So it's gonna tell us if there was an error converting this thing. So if we run this, we'll see nil, right? There was no error, we've converted it to 41. Now, are we sure we've converted it to 41? Well, we could figure that out just by, for instance, adding a number to it, right? So 41 plus four, if this has been converted to an integer, it should print out 45, and it did. So, hey, hey, congratulations, we have converted a string to an integer. But we still have this nil thing here, and that's kind of, you know, kind of a hassle. What is this? How do we get rid of this? We have to use it or else we'll get an error. Well, what you're gonna wanna do a lot of times is create an if statement. So let's go if error equals nil, right? That means everything went well, right? So now we can do whatever we want, right? And we don't need to reference that error variable because we're using it right here. And here we can maybe do an else statement and say else fmt.println a, hey, <laughs> there was an error. And if we wanted to be really crazy, we could actually print out whatever that error is. So let's save this and run it. This should just print out 45. So if we do that, boom, it does. It prints out 45. Well, what happens if there is an error? Well, let's create one. We can do that. Let's come up here and change our original string from 41 to Bob, right? You can't really convert Bob into an integer. Bob has no integer counterpart, right? It's like converting apples to four. You just can't do that. So this should throw an error, right? So let's run this thing. Hey, there was an error. And then here it will print out the error. 
S-T-R-C-O-N-V dot a toy, A to I, parsing Bob in valid syntax, right? So, you know, this is a lot of code just to convert something to an integer, but that's how it works in Go. Everything is a lot of code, it seems like, <laughs> but that's just how it goes. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. You have over 150,000 students learn to go just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.